Hey guys, so this week I've been playing Binary Domain, which if you don't know, it's a game from Sega, but it's kind of aimed at the Western audience, mainly me. It's a game built specifically for me, because it's a game where it's a cover shooter, and there's stuff, and there's also robots, and you blow up the robots, so is it any good? Did they do a good job making a game for me, or is it a game for nobody? Well, here's my opinion of Binary Domain. It's not really all that mind-blowing for me to say that Japanese developers and Western developers tend to make slightly different kinds of games. And the divide doesn't really end there either, because the guys over in Eastern Europe make games like The Witcher and, and Stalker, whereas over here we make different games. There's just a few cultural differences and some game design philosophies that have developed in certain areas that lead to different games. The most clear-cut obviously being Japanese developers and Western developers. Western developers tend to go for, like, gritty and masculine and uh, brr, Gears of War and all that kind of stuff. Whereas Japanese developers tend to favor a completely different visual style. Over the years, with globalization and whatnot, it seems like both sides have been trying to develop games to appeal to each other. And usually this leads to some weird amalgamation that's straight out of, like, Alien Resurrection. It's like, ah, ah, kill me! With Binary Domain, it looks like Sega's trying to do it all over again with a Japanese-developed game aimed at the Western audience. The game itself is a third-person, military, cover-based shooter. And it comes with everything you would expect from that type of game. You get guns, lots of guns, and you go from cover to cover and you shoot enemies. But because this was developed in Japan, obviously they sort of stray away from the violence, so instead of locusts or terrorists, you're fighting robots. So while it doesn't have all the blood and guts and gore that you would expect from a third-person shooter, because it's robots, so the robots can be destroyed in all kinds of crazy manner, you know, blowing limbs off and stuff, but it seems less violent because they're just robots. The gameplay works pretty well. I mean, the cover system works great. You go from one piece of cover to the next. It doesn't work quite as well as, like, Gears of War or Mass Effect in terms of its switching cover, but overall, it's a pretty solid cover system. The gunplay works really well. The shooting is very tight, and there's a bunch of different weapons that you can pick up and try that all have their unique feel. The enemies as well have some pretty good AI. Not great, but pretty good. They'll kind of shoot and take cover a lot. You know, they're kind of slightly primitive compared to a lot of the shooters we've probably played, but they work out well enough. There's also quite a lot of boss battles in this game where you fight all kinds of crazy giant robots. A lot of times the boss battles are just stripping down their armor enough so that you can shoot the glowing parts, kind of like if you ever played Lost Planet. But each of the bosses is kind of unique and a lot of fun. As you progress through the game and blow up all the robots you can see, you actually earn points which you can use to upgrade your weapons. Throughout the game, you'll come across these little kiosks where you can go to buy ammo or grenades or health packs and also upgrade your weapons and the weapons of your squad mates. It gives the game sort of this arcadey feel that's kind of nice, you know, you get bonuses for blowing up certain limbs or getting a headshot. But the upgrades are all linear, so it's not like you make a lot of choices, so it's not very RPG-esque, it's just kind of spend your points to get better. Thankfully, you don't have to fight these robots alone, because you have squad mates to help you out, and as you progress through the game, you actually pick up new squad mates. Each of your squad mates has unique talents, you know, you got a demolition chick, a chick that snipes, a, a dude that has a big old heavy machine gun. And at certain points of the game, it actually gives you the choice of, hey, which guy do you want to take with you in this part of the game? The squad mates hold their own pretty well, but overall, you have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Like a lot of these squad-based shooters, you can actually give commands to your squad mates to get them to do things. But all your commands are actually given through a headset you have to wear while playing the game. It's a lot like the Kinect integration in Mass Effect 3, only not quite as good, and you can't ignore it and use buttons. You can play through the game without giving commands through the headset if you so choose, but scattered throughout the game there are actually these conversations that you have with your squad mates. Your squad will ask you a question and you'll actually press down the left bumper and open up your menu and see which responses that you can say and you actually have to physically say into the headset. The voice recognition isn't great, but it works well enough most of the time. It's usually pretty good about recognizing when I want my squad to take cover, or when I want them to advance, or when I want to tell the French robot that I love him. Do not worry on my account, monsieur. The story is pretty interesting. It covers things like racism and technology and the inevitability of evolution and how technology plays and all that stuff. You know, typical sort of Japanese things. A lot of it very high-minded in, in this weird gameplay that not a lot of it I understand. But besides the single player, the game actually comes with a fairly robust multiplayer. It comes with your typical deathmatch and other competitive type gameplays where you fight other people, but also the cooperative stuff like Horde Mode where you can you and three other guys fight a bunch of robots. The multiplayer doesn't do anything crazy or new, but it's it's nice enough. It's, it's pretty standard multiplayer and I don't think anyone's going to be playing it for years to come, but it works out pretty well. I think Binary Domain does a good job of 
you know, aiming itself at the Western audience, uh, emulating some of the ideas of like the Gears of War and Mass Effects and all that stuff, keeping some of its identity as, as an Eastern type game. Uh, but overall, it's an incredibly fun game. But I worry that it's not too, I mean, it's not weird enough to attract people who are really into Japanese games, and it's not, you know, oh my god, Gears of War, so I, it's this weird medium that I think is really good, but I think a lot of people are just going to ignore, uh, so it's kind of going to die, but hopefully it'll get enough steam so that they can make a sequel, and maybe do some more things, maybe make it a little bit more Western, but also make it more weird Japanese, I don't know, but overall, pretty fun game that I think a lot of people aren't going to get around, so maybe wait till it's like dropped in price and pick it up for like 20 bucks at GameStop or whatever, but it's a pretty fun game.